This Utah football roster is loaded with talent. Whether it's Cam Rising, Dalton Kincaid, or Tavion Thomas, these guys are set to dominate at the college stage. But what is their draft stock heading into the 2022 college football season? You are Locked On Utes, your daily podcast on the Utah Utes. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everyone. My name is JT Wistersill, and thank you for making Locked On Utes your first listen every single day. We are available on all platforms, including YouTube. I'd also like to thank a second to thank LinkedIn Jobs for being the official college football recruiting sponsor across the Locked On College Network. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your jobs for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. Terms and conditions do apply. So ready to get week two going here for the Locked On Utes podcast. Thank you guys so much for making week one successful. Got up to 200 subscribers on YouTube, so we really appreciate the support. On today's show, we're going to be talking about some of these Utah guys. This is a really talented team. We went over the expectations for them last week. And now let's talk about what their draft stock is heading into the 2022 college football season. And these are guys where if they really perform up to standard, I think a number of them could be very high picks in the NFL draft for the 2023 NFL draft. And who knows? I mean, hey, if they have a good enough season in 2022, they could be playing in some of those early games in 2023 like they just were at the Rose Bowl as well. So exciting time for Utah. And some of these players, I think, are what's really going to drive this team this season. So let's look, take a look and see what they're viewed at in terms of the NFL. First, one big question we have to ask with this team is, could they set a record for the most draft picks? Well, if you look if, in terms of a Utah team, so look back to 2017, there were eight Utah picks, eight Utah players drafted in 2017, and then they just missed tying that mark in 2020 when they had seven picks as well. So Utah has been a team that's been kind of churning out some NFL talent recently. I mean, look at a guy like Devin Lloyd, who has just drafted 26 overall. There's a ton of Utes who, as the NFL training camp gets underway, those guys are going to be vying for roster spots off last year's team. So this is a Utah team that's been known for producing talent, and this year is going to be no exception for Coach Whittingham's squad. And speaking of those guys, we're going to talk about that talent right here. So here's how we're going to do it. We're going to talk about the guys first that I think could really be in slash get into that first round conversation. Then we're going to talk about those guys who are going to be kind of those day two, second and third round guys. And then some of those guys who will have a chance to slip in to those last couple rounds, four, five, six, and seven. So first want to start it off with the guy who's getting the most hype for Utah. And that is going to be Clark Phillips. I mean, the 5'10", 184 pound cornerback is a guy that Mel Kuyper's really into. He's Mel's fourth ranked prospect USA today in their mock draft had him going 49th overall and PFF had him ranked as their eighth corner as well. So Clark, the highest recruit to ever come to Utah in 2020 came over, played in the COVID shortened season, 2021 last year, excelled, had an awesome year, led the Pac-12 with 15 passes defended, two of those being the big being interceptions he had. So an unbelievable year for Clark. And he's a guy, he's a true ball hawk, second team all Pac-12. He doesn't, not the biggest. That's the one thing that's going to hurt him in terms of draft stock is he is only, is he's 5'10". And he, he's a legitimate 5'10". I've stood next to him on a few occasions, but man, he plays so much bigger than his size as well. And the other thing is, we're going to talk about a guy in a little bit, Dalton Kincaid, who has a basketball background. Clark is another guy who's has just that ability to leap out the gym like a basketball player. I actually even played Clark in basketball this weekend and saw those hops on display firsthand. It's what allows him to hang with some of those bigger corners in big games whether it be the Rose Bowl, where he did a good job on in Jigba Smith, even though he had an unbelievable day, and guys like Drake London or some of the other elite receivers in the Pac-12 in the past. That leaping ability, he's got unbelievable lateral movement, hips are oily, he's able to stay with guys. If you, corner The cornerback position is all about reactions. You're doing, you got to react to whatever they're doing in, if you're in man-to-man, -man. and a lot of times, Clark is left alone on an island. He's left to fend to himself and really has to react and in, in charge of locking a guy down. And he's able to do that unbelievably. It's why he is one of the elite shutdown corners in college football as well. And despite his limited size that we talked about a little bit, he is extremely physical and he is not scared at all to get his head in there, make tackles, make plays. PFF 
according to them, he had 59 solo tackles last year. His his 59 solo tackles last year were the 12th most amongst all corners and seventh most when isolating solely as an outside cornerback. So Clark, he's a physical guy. We know he can stay with anyone. I think the only thing in terms of NFL wise that will of some evaluators would question would be that height and his ability to stay with some of those bigger guys. But hey, I mean, if you want as well, you could just kick him inside the slot. You need three corners who can cover and lock down a field at all times in the college level and especially in the NFL with the receiver talent there. So I think Clark is going to have a home with ease at the next level. I think a lot of teams are going to fall in love with him. And also, that's the other thing we got to talk about when we're talking about Clark with teams falling in love. He is a coach's dream. If you just talk with this guy, you'd be like, you could tell, is he, is he a coach's son or something? Like he just exudes everything a football coach would want his player. He's extremely respectful. He's one of the hardest workers in the room. He's a leader. He's extremely unselfish, gives all the credit to his teammates. I mean, I'm literally describing like, if you wanted to build the perfect football player, these are the qualities you would want him to have. And Clark genuinely has those. I've almost never talked with a more selfless guy. He is absolutely incredible in that regard. So Clark, he's an awesome player and even awesome, an even better teammate and leader. So I think that NFL evaluators are going to fall in love with him. And he's a guy who's definitely going to get a combine invite. So we know he's going to be down there and people are going to talk with him and just realize, okay, this guy lights up the room and man, his play lights up on the film as well. When we turn on the game tape. So Clark's a guy for me right now, I think he's a top, he's a lock to go in the top 40 barring any injuries or anything. I think he's, his last two years have been too good. I expect him to have another really good year this year. We all expect him to be first team pack 12 best corner in the pack 12 as well. So I think that's where he is, but I think if he has a really good year, say some pick sixes mixed in there as well as some big time performances. I mean, he's going to get a chance to face Jordan Addison, one of the best receivers in the country, literally won the Bolitnikoff last year at Rice Eccles later. So you get guys like that. And we know the pack is always full of talented receivers, whether it be a few of the guys that Oregon or UCLA will have, and he's going to have an opportunity to hopefully Utah's in some big, meaningful games. And when you ball out in those kind of games, that's where you're also able to boost your stock. So I think for a guy like Clark, I think if he could really perform well this season and go a little bit higher than some of us are expecting him to, I think he could absolutely be in the t- kind of in the 20. So a lock for the first round. I think he'd go there, maybe even slip into the teens, depending on the year he has, but I think he's more in the 20s. But I think Utah is going to have back-to-back first round picks more than likely because I expect him to have a really strong season this coming year. So Clark is the guy in terms of like who's the first guy that evaluators are going to look to when you think of Utah's roster. It's going to be Clark Phillips. But there's also a clear number two, and that's Dalton Kincaid, a guy who passed on a combine invite in the 2022 NFL draft to return to Utah and play for the Utes this coming season. So for Dalton, he's we you know he's 242 pounds, 6'4, so good good height for a tight end. Probably want to see him get a little bit stronger for the next level, but either way, he'll be able to handle guys fine. So PFF has Dalton as their 47th overall prospect and their second ranked tight end. Now you guys may be thinking, wait, I thought I saw him as the seventh tight end, I believe, and Brant Keithy is the fourth tight end. So that was relating to college football, if you saw that PFF thing. In terms of NFL prospects, the NFL is higher on Dalton because of his size, because we mentioned Dalton, a little bit heavier, and that 6'4 frame versus a guy like Brant Keithy, he's only 6'2", 222. That's not ideal height for an NFL tight end, especially you would have to get heavier. And we're going to touch on Keithy in a little bit. We know Utah's got an elite tight end duo, but for keeping the focus on Kincaid right now, we know he's a really good route runner who excels at getting in and out of his breaks. He is another huge mismatch nightmare, especially in the red zone. He makes jump balls not feel like 50-50. It's more like an 80-20. He's extremely strong with it. He Another PFF quote, he has had... He hasn't dropped a single pass on 37 opportunities at Utah while going seven for nine in contested opportunities last season as well. So he's a definition of throw it up there, go get it. Cam already trusted him in year one. He's going to trust him even more in his, or excuse me, the first year they really played together because Dalton, of course, was here during the 2020 COVID shortened season, the weird year. But last year, getting those in-game reps together, they really started to build that trust and then This year, I think it's going to be even stronger, and I expect him to – I do think he's going to have a really good chance to lead Utah in yards as well as, once again, in touchdowns. He did lead the team with eight touchdowns in terms of touchdown passes, as we all know what Tavion did in total touchdowns. But through the air, Kincaid was the guy. So 
I think Dalton will have to put on a little bit more weight if he wants to block some of the bigger defensive linemen in the NFL, but I don't think that'll be a problem for him. Each year he's gotten stronger, he's gotten better. He was a huge part of the reason Utah was able to run the football so effectively last year, as was that entire tight end room. So we know he can get after it at the line of scrimmage as a blocker, and we know getting off it as well. He's got great break off the line and really does a good job with those strong hands. He's not going to drop a ball. He's tough over the middle. He's not afraid to go up and get it as well. So using that basketball leaping ability we talked about with Clark, Dalton's the guy, the main guy when you're talking about that on Utah's roster that you think of because he just goes up there and gets it, man. So Dalton, another guy. Right now, I think he's a second round pick going into the year. I think that's how most people have him evaluated. But I think he's going to be a top 40 pick when it's all said and done. And I think he'll have a real opportunity to squeak in somewhere between 27 to 32 in that first round. So a great opportunity for Dalton to kind of crawl in there as well. And he is going to have another phenomenal year for the Utes this year as well. And I think it's really going to boost his draft stock heading into next season. So those are the guys that I really think have the strongest chance to go in the first round. It's actually one other big name on Utah's roster who might very well may play quarterback that I'm going to talk about that has a chance to go in the first round in just a moment. But first, I want to tell you guys about LinkedIn Talent Solution. As the sums comes comes out and small businesses are back in business, LinkedIn Jobs makes it easier to grow your team. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the people you want to interview faster and for free. So personally, I've used LinkedIn a lot. It's helped me stay connected with my friends as well as network and kind of get connected with other people that are in the sports media field. So I'm able to see how my friends are growing as well as look at and kind of see what some of the most successful people in the business are doing. And it applies to any type of field. LinkedIn can definitely help you out. Create a free job post in minutes on LinkedIn jobs. We know there's a great pool of candidates on LinkedIn. So if you guys are hiring, you've got to use LinkedIn. Use LinkedIn jobs to reach your network and beyond at the world's largest professional network of over 810 million people. It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn the number one LinkedIn Jobs, number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the candidates you want to talk to faster. Did you know every week nearly 40 million job seekers visit LinkedIn? Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions may apply. So uh, we talked about Clark Phillips, pretty much a lock for that top 40 picks really has a really good chance to be a first rounder. And Dalton Kincaid, another guy who's probably a second rounder at the moment with a chance to squeak in late in the first round, but either way with a good season could very well be a top 40 pick as NFL teams love his ability as a, as a, multifaceted tight end. He, we know, he know he can get it done at the line of scrimmage as well as catch passes, which is what you're looking for with the tight end position being so valuable because of the versatility. It applies with the different personnel and the way it confuses defense, especially at the NFL level. So first guy I'm going to talk about that I think right now is more in that second to third round conversation coming into the season and how people have him evaluated is Cam Rising. So this is a guy that a lot of Utah fans obviously think should be in the first round, but NFL guys don't see it quite that way. When you're talking about first round NFL quarterbacks, right now the top two guys, Bryce Young, just won Heisman, and CJ Stroud. And we saw how good Stroud looked in the Rose Bowl, and he is a little bit better in terms of Cam as a prospect right now. But I do think Cam will have an opportunity to make some progress. And I think a great opportunity for Cam to show out and really impress NFL evaluators is going to be that very first game versus Florida because Anthony Richardson is one of the biggest enigmas in the draft community right now. Richardson is a guy some people think could go in the top 10 or he could even slip depending on how the season he has. Remember how crazy the NFL draft world can be. Spencer Rattler was supposed to be the first overall pick heading into the 2021 college football season. He ended up transferring schools and not even declaring, obviously. So these things change super frequently. So Cam's going to have a chance to sure up on some of those weaknesses and get himself drafted in 2023. So what do we love about Cam? First, he absolutely fits the bill as a mobile quarterback in the NFL. It's huge to have a quarterback who's able to run, and especially having one who's tough. That's a guy that team teammates are going to rally around, and we know he's a phenomenal leader as well as he helped turn around Utah's season last year. So Cam, one of the toughest guys on this Utah team, a great leader as well, and someone who's not afraid at all to mix it up in between the tackles, and he's not afraid to lower his head and try to get those tough yardages. And of course, he's also a really good quarterback. He rarely turns the ball over. He's extremely accurate, especially in the mid 
on intermediate throws and he makes really smart decisions with the ball as i alluded to by saying he doesn't turn it over so cam really solid with the ball he doesn't have the strongest arm in in this draft and i think that's why most people don't have him as a top 10 quarterback going into this draft class but no one had Joe Burrow, for example, going first overall in the 2019 NFL draft. And we saw how the, well that worked out for the Cincinnati Bengals as they were just in the Super Bowl. So just another example of how much you can improve your stock in a single season. But Cam can throw deep balls and he throws it accurately. He just doesn't have the strongest arm in the world and can't make the same off-platform throws as some of those other quarterbacks, whether it be a Bryce Young or a C.J. Stratton. Now, Cam is still a really good quarterback and one of the best in college football. I personally I think he's one of the 10 best college quarterbacks. But in terms of projecting the NFL, I think he needs to show a little bit more of that arm strength improvement and ability to really launch it to improve his draft stock and try to be a first round pick. Also, I think another year of just consistent play would be huge for him. We expect Cam to be the same player he is, but just improve on some of those weaknesses a little bit. Up that arm strength, make a couple more deep throws, lead this offense to one of the more prolific in the country as it was kind of when he took over. But this year, you know, teams have had an entire offseason to look at Cam and game plan for him as well. So I think he's really going to come out and crush it. And he's a guy, as I mentioned, that I think right now he's a second to third round kind of guy. But if he really has a great season, like everyone thinks he's capable of doing it in the state of Utah, I really think you get in that first round conversation. So it's going to be really fun to watch and see how Cam develops as a passer this season. And he's already a great one, but he's trying to be a great one in terms of an NFL thrower. And I think he's got a really good chance to do that. As we've already talked about some of the receivers on this team, Devon Vele, Makai Cope, the loaded tight ends. He's got the weapons, going to have a running game as well. He's going to have a really good opportunity to put on a show and improve that stock. Moving on, let's talk about Braden Daniels. So 6'4", 300-pound guy. He's fourth on Mel Kuyper's board for guards, ninth on PFF's list for guards. And you may think, wait, he played tackle last year. Yes, but he also spent the two seasons before that, whether going back to 2019, then 2020 at guard, and then played tackle last year, right tackle, then played left tackle. So first, that's the number one thing that teams are going to find attractive about a guy in Brain Daniels is the versatility. You know, he can play all over the offensive line if you need to. Obviously, a highly intelligent guy that's capable of learning multiple positions. And that's one thing that a lot of people may not understand stand along the offensive line is every position is so different. There's so many little things based on what front you're facing, what technique the defensive lineman is in in front of you. There are so many little nuances to each position. So if you have a guy that's able to take on what he's going to do at left, right guard, or at tackle, either tackle spot as well, that's an incredible skill and one I have no doubt that Daniels possesses. So the other reason he's going to be a guard at the next level is kind of that height and the weight. Six. There are not a lot of 6'4 tackles in the NFL. Most of these guys are 6'6 at the minimum. So even though Daniels is a bigger guy, I mean, he does weigh 300 pounds as well. He's more of an NFL guard. And that's one thing teams will love is the power that he packs in that 300 pound frame. He explodes off the line. He's an aggressive finisher. He loves running over guys, plays with a mean streak, good at moving guys out of the way, and is really solid in pass protection, able to take guys on, whether it's a bull rush, handle a spin move, guys are trying to get by him, or if they're doing a twist, he's able to easily pass guys off as well. So an extremely high IQ offensive lineman with tons of game reps, who's a team first kind of guy. We're going to see him take those some of those leadership strides as well this year, especially with no Nick Four. That's something we talked about on Friday's show is him filling that leadership void. So I think Daniels is in for a huge year for this Utah team. Going to be a first team, all Pac-12 left tackle. And then because of that, I think he's going to have a really good chance to go in that second, third round range. I'd say right now he's more in that day three range. But I think if he really has a good year, he can get drafted, be a day two kind of guy. And speaking of day two kind of guys, we have one more here for you. Mohamed Diabate. So when you're looking at Diabate, he's Mel's sixth ranked inside backer. Number one, not surprisingly, is Noah Sewell, who Utah is going to face this year. And a lot of drafting, especially in the NFL, can be off traits. We see guys stock skyrocket in a positive way or just free fall in a negative way at the NFL Combine based on how you test. And I think Diabate is a guy who's going to test unbelievably. 6'3", 215 pounds, explosive linebacker who's capable of doing it all. I 
my NFL comparison to him would probably be a worse ver- a worse version of Micah Parsons. I don't think he's going to come in the NFL and win rookie of the year. And I don't know think he's going to do that for Utah, obviously, is come in and be their defensive MVP because a lot of the other guys they have. But I do think he's going to make an awesome mark on this program because of his versatility. He's going to be able to drop in the coverage as well as he does a great job sifting through offensive linemen, finding those running lanes and meeting running backs in the hole. And we know on third and longs or f- important fourth downs, he can get it done as a pass rusher too. He's a guy because of his speed. He's really effective twisting inside and kind of confusing guards as he blitzes right by him. He's also really good at hopping over when there's an open gap and he can often beat offensive linemen with his quick first step because he is one of those more athletic guys, but has the power as well to take him on a little bit too. So I think Diabate is a guy that's going to be really attractive to a lot of these NFL teams, especially if he's able to come back healthy. That's the big thing with him. He's got to be healthy and have a good year. So if he's able to come back healthy, be a leader on a really good Utah team, I think he could really be another one of these guys who's in the second to third round. I think some people may uh, off of last year's film have him in the third round, but that's something as well where because of the injuries, there's going to be questions of what he looks like coming back from that. So he's going to have a great opportunity to show it this year. And I think he's absolutely going to be able to do it and have a really strong season as one of the team leaders for the Utes coming over from Florida, where he's going to get to have a revenge game in the very first week. Of course, Florida wasn't like you have to leave this program. He just wanted to leave and have an opportunity to win, which Utah presented a better opportunity to do so than Florida. But Florida, still a very formidable opponent, obviously, is what should make a great week one game. But no doubt, that's the one Diabate has circled on the schedule. You always want to get back at someone who you left or anything like that, you want to show them that you guys should have done everything in your power to keep me, which I'm sure, as I mentioned, Billy Napier, Florida, I'm sure they wanted him to stay, but I, did they do everything in their power to keep him? Probably not. All righty. So that's going to do it for our guys. Those kind of those day two prospects, because I do think if Diabate has a really good year, can get into that day two conversation. So now let's look at more of the guys who are day three guys slash undrafted guys right now that I think are really going to need to have big years for the Utes in order to get into that drafted conversation on day three. So the first one is Brant Keithy. Now you may be thinking, Brant Keithy is the guy who's led us in yards in, you look at 2019 as well as 2021. Why would he be on this bubble list? Well, I think a lot of teams in the NFL are kind of struggling to where he's going to play at. So for example, Mel Kuyper kind of has enlisted as a fullback slash H-back, which I think he would do fine as a fullback. I mean, he's a physical blocker, but this still seems like he would be more natural in like that H-back role that teams want. And he doesn't seem like a natural fit at tight end because he is only 6'2", 220. So I've always thought at the next level, he could try to kick out to a receiver where I think in the slot, he could be effective where he does run extremely good routes as well. We know he's got good hands, very savvy at getting open, especially against zone zone coverage. He understands where those soft spots are going to be and is able to make some of those plays. So, and he's also a very tough blocker. He kind of reminds me of how, like, if you watch Cooper Cup on the Rams offense, Cooper Cup is not afraid to get in there and mix it up with defensive linemen. That's something that Sean McVay understands stands because they'll use him a lot to take out take out defensive ends or just kind of occupy them obviously cooper cup's not pancaking nfl dns but i think keithy could do the same thing as a slot receiver so if he has another huge year for the utes kind of shows some of that versatility continues to have success i think he's a guy who will be drafted in that day three kind of slot as he's going to continue to be a successful weapon inside this utah offense that's coach ludwig and of course cam rising love to go to in crucial situations a guy who can make big plays and that's going to be attractive to any nfl team so i think keithy will end up being a day three guy because he is kind of the tweener receiver tight end which one personally i think receiver another guy who should have huge numbers in this utah offense once again is tavion thomas it's a guy we talked about a lot on this show this last week as he was named the maxwell award as well as picking up some other recognition for his skills so thomas 6'2 238 look as a runner he's unbelievable i mean we talked about his vision his toughness it takes more than one guy to bring him down hits the hole with passion able to sift through guys and there's a reason he had such an unbelievable year last year he really is a great runner of the football but unfortunately a great runner of the football doesn't get it done in today's nfl anymore by itself you also have to be a really good receiving back And that's something for his career. Tavion Thomas hasn't been. So in his three college seasons in total with Cincinnati and then the Utah Utah as well, he has a total of four catches for seven yards 
in all those years combined. And that's just not good enough for the NFL level. I think those teams are really going to want to see him add to that. Even if it's something as simple as screen passes, just show us you can be an effective third down back because teams aren't going to want to draft a guy who's just going to be a two down back when there are so many college running backs who can do both. Even if they're not as effective as a runner, I think teams would rather have a guy who's a little bit worse as a runner, but has a really good receiver as well, even in both those skills than great as a runner, but such a drop drop off as a receiver. So I'm sure that's something Tavion's been working on all off season long. I'm sure it's something he's been in the coach's ear about as well saying, Hey, let me play on some of these third downs. Let me run some routes. Let me get out there a little bit and show that I can do this and be a threat in open space, which you know, who he is as he's broken so many tackles this year. Once he gets the ball in his hands, he is a huge weapon for Utah. So I think if he really grinds and work up, works on that, he's going to have a great opportunity to be drafted on day three of the NFL draft as teams will see the value. You know, the running back position can be devalued in the NFL, but if you got a guy who's got Tavion's vision and can also give you a little something out of the backfield, he'll be drafted. Got two more guys. These ones are two more off the radar. I think not a lot of Utah fans are talking about these guys as like, oh, are they going to be draft guys or maybe are they even going to leave after this year? And I'm going to give two sleepers. Number one is Van Fillinger. We're going to talk about him in future breakout episodes, but I think he is an unbelievable player. 6'4", 250, technically a freshman last year, but did play during the COVID year. He led off freshmen with five and a half sacks. He had nine tackles for loss, four QB hurries in 13 starts, and he played in 14 games in total. So unbelievable year last year for Fillinger. I think he's going to get even better, becoming more def- refined in his pass rushers, working on using his hands a little bit more to knock offensive linemen's hands out of the way. He's already got the bend and the arm length, but just learning how to use, becoming a better hand fighter, I think would be absolutely crucial for his game to generate a few more sacks, as well as adding a couple more moves, as I think he was really winning because of his traits last year, more so than he's an expert technician when it comes to pass rush technique. I think it's more so his bend and athleticism, which hopefully the coaches have kind of refined. And now he's going to have a really good chance if he has a huge year this year, which I think he's capable of doing, having learned from guys like Devin Lloyd helped him out a little bit. I'm sure we saw what an effective rusher he could be. And of course, Tafua, who's an awesome rusher for this Utah team for a number of years. So I think Fillinger could be a guy that could really squeak up into even the day two conversation if he has a monster year, but could very well come back as well and want to have another year as obviously a lot of players love coming back to Utah as continue to have success as a program. And the last guy I'm going to bring up is to Travis Broughton. So Broughton's a guy that 5'11", 195, got hurt last year, but for two years in a row before the injuries was planned. Lights out football, a really strong corner on the outside. Athletic has the length you would like to play that position in the NFL and is another guy that I think a lot of NFL teams would look at and go, okay, he could add some value for us on the outside. So if Broadham is able to return to form, I think he could absolutely be a day three pick and and maybe if he has an unbelievable year, day two. But him and Fillinger, if they go out this year, Fillinger, I'd probably, if I pushed with it, because I'm so high on him, I do think he'd actually be a day two guy, but he's such a sleeper to even declare. That's why I debated putting him on this list. But Broadham's a guy, I think he's more of a day three player, but he's going to be a really good day three player and I think could be a contributor to a lot of NFL teams. And this is a loaded Utah secondary, as we talked about on last week's show. So those are the Utes I think really have a shot to get drafted this year. I think some of those guys will probably come back to college. Some of them definitely going to declare, like a Dalton Kincaid and Brant Keithy, who are in their fifth years in college. So it's going to be interesting to see how this season plays out for these youths, but this is a talented team. No surprise to see that talent play out on the NFL field. So make sure you guys follow locked on Utes. Follow me at Twitter at JT with Drusilla as well. I'm going to do be doing another Q and a on Friday. Want to hear about what you guys think will be the biggest storylines of media day. Pac 12 media day is this coming Friday. So we'll definitely be talking about that throughout the week. Have some more fun guests lined up this week. If you guys are curious about the Utah BYU rivalry and how it would look like this year, if those two teams played, make sure you stay locked in to locked on Utes as we'll be hitting that as well as talking about recruiting some of the future of the Utes, as well as what to expect from this freshman class that's coming in to contribute in the 2022 NFL season. Also, we know you guys make Locked On Utes your first listen every day, but we have a recommendation for your second listen every day. Locked On Pac-12. Get more of the Pac-12 by making Locked On Pac-12 your second listen every day. Host Spencer McLaughlin and local experts of Locked On take you across the Pac-12 in 30 minutes. Make Locked On Pac-12 your second listen 
of Locked On Pac-12. And in case you guys don't get enough of me on this feed five days a week, I'm also going to be jumping on Locked On Pac-12 this week to kind of do a little bit of a preview and talk about what's going to be a great football season. So thank you guys so much for joining us on Locked On Utes today. That's all for today, but we'll see you later this week or tomorrow on Locked On Utes.